everybody and welcome to my physics video presentation on kinematics. This is going to be kind of like an introduction to kinematics. Hopefully you have gone over a little bit of it um, and maybe you're not too familiar with the kinematics equations. There are four of them. Um, something else you should know about kinematics equations is that you can only really solve the problem using kinematics if the acceleration is going to be constant. So, let's say that the acceleration changed over time, you would not be able to use kinematics equations to solve that problem. You'd have to use something else to solve that problem. Uh, maybe you haven't gone over any of that yet, but let's take a look at the kinematics equations. And V stands for velocity. Uh, the VO stands for the initial velocity, so this one will stand for the final velocity. The A stands for acceleration, and the T stands for time. And then over here we have X minus XO. The X just stands for the final displacement, and the XO stands for the initial displacement. So kind of a good example is that if, if my final distance was 50 meters, and my initial distance was 0 meters, then I, hey, I've covered 50 meters. Um, one thing you'll notice about each of these equations is that they're, all four of them, at least missing one variable. Well, all of them are missing one variable. And that kind of happens because sometimes in problems you're just giving, you're just given a couple variables to solve for, and you would need to use a different equation at all times. So let's go ahead and get into this problem. It says that suppose a boy drops a stone from a 250 meter cliff. How long does it take for the stone to hit the ground? So we want to find out, first of all, what we're looking for. And obviously asks us how long does it take for the stone to hit the ground? So we are looking for time. In seconds, we're trying to find how much time elapses before the stone hits the ground. So the first thing that they gave us, well, really the only thing that they gave us was the displacement. They told us that the boy was up 250 meters from the ground. So our initial displacement, remember, because XO stands for initial displacement. Our, yeah, our initial distance is at 250 meters. And right here at the bottom, our final distance is zero. So this stone is going to cover 250 meters. Now, the other thing, another thing that they haven't told us, but we can kind of pretty much tell ourselves, is that during the process, or before he actually drops the stone, the initial velocity of the stone is going to be at zero. So velocity initial is going to be at zero. They don't tell us the, the final velocity of, you know, when the stone is dropping, what is that velocity doing? Since the acceleration is constant, we know that the final velocity is going to, you know, be one single speed in meters per second. Um, and they don't tell us the acceleration. But since this stone is going through free fall at constant speed, boy, we can pretty much say that the acceleration is negative 9.8. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared is our acceleration. So here are the variables we have. We have both of our x's, we have our displacement, we have our initial velocity, and we have our acceleration. What we're missing out of all of this is obviously the time which we're wanting to solve for, and we're missing our final velocity. So let me put that in here. We don't know our final velocity. So going down to these kinematics equations, if our distance is not given, we're going to use this formula. If our final velocity is not given, we're going to use this formula. Well, hey, look, we already found a formula we're going to use since we're not given our final velocity. 
you do not want one of the biggest mistakes that people do is that they say well the time isn't given so i'm going to use this equation because the time is not given and that's what we want to solve for right but notice that this equation has no variable for time for t so it's not going to help you out at all because you're not going to be able to plug in or find your t so you do want to use this equation right here because our final velocity is not given um, and it does take a practice to kind of um, see which equation you have to use. Sometimes it's confusing, but it does help to do a lot of examples. So let me go ahead and pull this equation up so we can have it up there to work with. Okay. So we know we're going to use this equation right here because we're not given our final velocity and we want to find uh, the time. So we want to find this right here. So what we're going to do is start plugging in our variables first. I like to align my variables up here to show me what I have first and what I'm trying to solve for, what I don't have. So first what we're going to do is plug in our x is 0 because we know that the final distance is going to reach is the ground which is at zero meters and that's we're going to subtract 250 because that's our initial distance so zero minus 250 equals our initial velocity and we said that was zero because that was right before he drops the stone times our time so that'll be zero t that'll just cancel out in the end plus one half of the acceleration we said our acceleration was negative 9.8 because this stone is going through free fall times our time squared so here's another variable that we get to solve for so when we simplify this a little bit more this will just be negative 250 just do some pretty simple algebra here that'll cancel out so you're left with one half, let me just, this is easy, half of negative 9.8 is negative 4.9 t squared. We're going to divide both sides by negative 4.9 and we're also going to square what we get here. So let me just go ahead and divide, 250 divided by 4.9 gives you around 51.02 equals t squared. And then when you square root the 51.02, you get that t equals 7.14. So let me go ahead and put that on there. So we have found our time to be 7.14 seconds, and that wasn't too bad. So there, we know that the time it takes for the stone to reach the floor or the ground, 7.14 seconds. Now, if you want to solve this or check your answer, you definitely can. Um, let's say, for example, that the problem gave you the time, but it didn't give you the displacement. It didn't give you the 250 meters. Um, and you, that's what you're wanting to solve for is the displacement. Well, you would actually use the same exact equation because you're still not given the velocity final and you're wanting to solve for displacement, except you would leave this blank and then you would replace the t for 7.14. And then when you solve, you'd actually get 250 meters. And if you don't believe me, you can do that yourself. But um, kinematics equations work great. I'll post some other examples, and later on we'll get into two-dimensional kinematics. Thank you very much for watching, and I hoped it helped a little bit.